Hello and welcome to The Wrap Studios. I'm Beatrice Verhoeven, film reporter at The Wrap, and I'm about to talk Four Good Days with Glenn Close, Mila Kunis, and director and writer Rodrigo Garcia. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. It's, um, it's a tough movie to talk about, and, you know, movies about substance abuse and recovery and addiction is always a very sensitive subject. So I kind of wanted to start off and ask you how you came to talk, you know, talk about this in your movie, how the story came together. You know, it's based on the true story. It's based on an article by Eli Saslow in the Washington Post, you know, addressing very much the window, those four days in the lives of, of two actual women who are generous enough to let us uh, draw from their story, uh, Libya and Amanda. Um, and, and I thought it was just uh, riveting, not just because it spoke of the problem at large, mm-hmm. um, which, as brutal as it is, is shared by, you know, it, it's, it's brutal for each family, but it's very common, you know. Um, but this had great specificity and mostly the relationship between the mother and the daughter um, and how the addiction colored and framed a relationship that often in the best of cases is full of fine print anyway. So that's what drew me to it. And Glenn Close. Glenn Close. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? What drew you to the project? The first scene, the first scene where a mother locks her daughter out of the house. And um, I had to figure out, or I just was astounded, that someone would be brought to the position of feeling that that's what she had to do. And so that really drew me in. Um, And I learned so much from, from just being that character and dealing with with a daughter that had an addiction, I, I was just thinking about how how hyper vigilant I got, you know, because all of a sudden uh, you don't know what's the truth, mm-hmm. you and you always are suspecting that that she's not telling you the truth, and if she's not telling you the truth, what are you going to do about it, and can you do something about it? And it just it felt very, very real, and yeah. um, because it was, it's basically a pretty simple story. It's a beautifully written script, and um, everybody was so incredibly connected and concentrated on it. So for me, it it really was an exploration into new territory, um, and that always is uh, what really dr- dr- draws me in. Will it be new territory? And I know we don't have that much time left, but I quickly wanted to touch on, too, like your transformation in the film, Um, you know, from the very beginning where you meet or you go to your mom's house to the very end where you've completely transformed. Obviously, it's uh, four months later after the first shot. Kind of wanted to ask what was your research going into it? Um, What was preparing for, you know, those Mm -hmm. scenes at the beginning where you were very thin, very frail, very, you know, um, you know, you diet, but like how many pounds did you lose? Because you were. Thin. I don't know because I don't have a weight scale. This mm-hmm. is the truth, but I can tell you based on my clothing, I, you know, I was as thin as I was for Black Swan. So I know that it was. I wasn't health like I was healthy in regards to like yeah. the way that I did it. I know it's very healthy, but as far as like a lifestyle choice, I was like, this is rough. Yeah. But um, but it only had to be for a minute. So I I started uh, I think. Because you have to lose, you have to look a certain way. We talked about this in our first meeting. You do have to, unfortunately, look a certain way um, to look like a heroin addict. Uh, and so I think I did it over the past, I don't know, four or five months. Mm-hmm. I exercised and dieted, so I felt very strong. Because you still have to work long hours and you still have to be fit, so to speak. But I was thin, and then um, we bleached my hair, so that added a one hell of an element to it. And uh, and then as far as like research went. I have friends. I, I'm, I don't do drugs, I can honestly say, but I've had plenty of friends, and I currently have a girlfriend and whatnot that went through this that didn't survive, that didn't make it, and some are still battling it. So as far as the emotional aspect of addiction, I, I got I got it. Um, as far as the physical, anything that had to do with the, the, the technicalities of what an addict looks like physically, I was very grateful for YouTube. Because on YouTube, you really can't see a lot of videos. And I went to NA meetings, and I went to... Um, Halfway houses, and I went and, and, but that wasn't really what I needed. You also learned, and this is not to generalize, but so often when talking to someone who's freshly clean, it's hard to get a real answer about things. Like they're still an addict in some form or another. 
And so I thought that my original research was going to be about interviewing addicts, and then it, it very quickly made sense to me that it was so little to do with that. Um, but the technical of it was very much, when Rodrigo and I talked about it, it was just videos on YouTube and stuff. Yeah. Well, congratulations on the movie. It was uh, wonderful and very emotional. And thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank it's been you. a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.